my guest was taken to hell and he saw the devil's secret weapon that is sending millions that think they're Christians to hell. Next. Hello, right, Sid Roth here with Ivan Tuttle. And uh, Ivan, uh, you've had some encounters that few people on earth have had in the invisible realm. Uh, you um, uh, were raised in a Christian home. Yes. You even went down the altar and accepted Jesus. But you quickly left the things of God. Uh, and it had a lot to do with a difficult childhood. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, Sid, I was uh, diagnosed with ADHD at a much later age, but what we didn't know is as a child, I had ADHD, so I was constantly on the move. I had a father that had a very angry uh, streak to him, an angry side to him, mm -hmm. and my father would uh, beat me with a belt. In fact, if you look at x-rays, you'll see ribs in my back that have been broken from my dad actually hitting me with the belt. That's really hitting. Yeah, that's really hitting. That's beyond a normal hit. So yeah, I went through a lot of things like that. I spent most of my time alone as a child, uh, playing in the woods, etc. things like that. Uh, at 26, um, you had a blood clot uh, that resulted in, uh, in his death. And as a matter of fact, this was a while ago. This was in 1978. I'm going to take you back to the time you had just gotten out of the hospital. It's 9.20 p.m. Something woke you by grabbing you. What was that? Yeah, Sid, I, I got home from the hospital. I, you know, finally, I, hmm. I went to sleep at nine, around 9.20. Something grabbed a hold of my left wrist. And when it did this, it pulled me right up out of the bed. I mean, it just jerked me out of the bed like I was nothing, like I was a rag doll. And, you know, I tried to fight it. You know, that's the first instinct you have. Of course. And so I was trying to do this, and this, this thing, I realized all of a sudden that, hey, this is a demon. And I knew instantly I was going to hell. Hmm. And I knew that's where I was heading. And so this demon took me, and I, I, could, I started hearing these screams. I started smelling this awful smell. And this demon just kept taking me, and it just kept traveling. I mean, you feel you were going. And this demon took me to hell. And I'm in hell, and I'm looking around in hell, and I'm seeing all these different people, even people I recognize, even some from my childhood that I saw. I saw former pastors. I you, saw, you saw people that you felt were Christians. Oh, yes, yes. Mm. I felt it. Well, see, one of the things that happens is when you're in the spirit after you pass on, when you look at somebody else, you instantly know everything about them. There doesn't have to be communication because you know everything about them. So what happens is that you're looking at these people and you're, you're kind of speaking to them and they're telling you and you just read everything that's happening in their life. So you know exactly what they did. And it, it's amazing because these are not people you would expect to see there. You just wouldn't. But yet these people are in hell and they're tortured. And, and the torturing that goes on there, Sid, is unbelievable, but the thing that I think is the lasting impression on me was the hopelessness. Because Sid, when you're in hell, there's no hope. I mean, you're done. Once that happens, you're done. There's no hope, because when you try to pray, it's like an iron ceiling or, or iron dome over you. It goes nowhere. You know, you're done. You had your chance when you, you were here on earth, and now you're down there, and, you're, and I'm watching these people as they're being tortured. They can't move. They're solid. They're put in a place. I don't see an actual chain, but it's as if there's a chain around them, and they can't move. They can swing their hands around and move their feet around, but they're not going anywhere. And these demons are attacking them and attaching to them. I saw a young lady that was 18 years of age when she died, and she was hit by a drunk driver. And she couldn't understand why she was in hell, but she never accepted Jesus as her savior. And that's why she was there. You saw millions of people that have bought lies while in earth that were churchgoers yeah. in hell. What was the cause? Sid, the, one of the biggest causes are that people believe that all you have to do is just do one little thing to accept Jesus. Say and, a prayer with Billy, so to Right, and, and then you can do whatever you want in life. And that's not true. You can't do that. 
there's it, it now, what about the current teaching that says well once you accepted the lord his grace takes care of past present and future sins there's nothing you have to do about it um that's not in the bible of course not it, and not only is it not in the bible that's sending so many people to hell it's unreal you would be surprised there listen you can't you can't just say, okay, once you do it, that's it. Because it tells you in the Bible, certain people, certain things, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, I don't care who you are, you can't. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're telling little lies and you think, oh, I'm okay, I'm getting, uh, just little white lies. No, there's still problems. You, know, you have to daily just say, I do every day before I go to sleep, Lord, just forgive me of anything. I just do that mm -hmm. on a daily basis. In fact, if I catch myself doing something wrong, I instantly want to correct that because I've been there. I don't want to go back there. I don't want anybody to ever go there. Uh, you saw some things that will be helpful to us. You saw demons going back and forth from hell to heaven um, to deceive. Tell me about that, especially children. Oh, that deception was so bad. Uh, the deception started, there was a couple of things. One was video games. And this is before video games were invented. And the demons were going up there and getting into these games to distort young people's minds. Not only that, the demons were also, they're going back and forth from hell, from the center of hell where Lucifer was at, and going back up to the earth so that they could get to the earth and deceive these people. They would enter into people's bodies and they would use, they usually would find somebody that was very handsome or a very beautiful woman or a handsome man. And they would enter that body and they would use that person to deceive as many people as they could, especially lukewarm Christians or warmed up Christians, you know, and they would try to deceive them to take them out to, you know, do immoral things with them, etc. And that's what that was. That's what was happening. That was what was going on. I saw that in 1978. I watched it happen. What would you say was the worst thing you saw in hell? Wow. <laughs> Everything was the worst thing. The people but, really, but, I, I have a question though. Do yeah. people really feel pain? Yes. I mean, like physical pain in hell? Ah, Sid, the pain in hell is much worse than on earth. You see, when, when you get a splinter or a cut, you feel it right one little area. Of course. But when you are in the spirit, which you're in the spirit in hell, when you're down there, that pain goes through your whole body. So every bite mark that the demons put on you, every scratch that they do to you, everything they poke into you, it hurts in your whole being. And Sid, you can't pass out. In the flesh, if you get in a lot of pain, you can just pass right. out. You can't do that. And it never ends. See, this is the thing. It never, ever ends. It's always there. It's always going to keep continuing. It never goes away. There's no hope. No, there's no hope. None. Why do the demons keep... Uh, penetrating people with pain and suffering. Why, why do they keep it up? Sid, they enjoy it. That, that's what makes them happy. They enjoy doing that kind of stuff to us. They do it because, especially... They're like sadists. Exactly. But especially if you were a Christian at one time, oh, then they really thrive on that because that's something that now they can tease you for all eternity. Listen, that demon was laughing at me, making fun of me, and it was doing the same thing to all these other people. All these demons were because I bought it. I bought the lie. And all of a sudden, you heard a voice. Yes. Sid, that was the most wonderful thing that happened to me in hell. As I'm there and all of a sudden, I heard a voice that rang out and says, it's not his time yet. You must let him go. I made a promise to his mother. Ivan went to heaven and saw the future of many countries. You want to find out about that promise and why it worked? Next. Woo!